Charlie Leuven, Part 1 of 7. You've already put big old tears in my eyes. Must you throw dirt in my face? Hey everybody, it's Marla sitting with Nashville Music Space. Dot com and I'm here with the living legend Charlie Leuven. Not few, many legends around. Hi, Marla. Hi, Charlie. Thank you for having me over to your living room. Well, you're quite welcome. And while you're talking about legends, you know there's a lot of you hear that word thrown around a lot in Nashville. Most of it, most of them are just they're a legend in their own mind. But actually, I've got a a living. Legend Award. Right. Me and Rory Acuff received that that uh, honor the same night in Nashville, and I don't know anybody else that's uh, that's got one of those. Of course, you could take that and a couple of dollars go get you a cup of coffee with it, but uh, it's a nice thing to have. Well, I think by the time we get through with this, they're going to know it's really true. Now, along with your brother Ira. You guys began singing professionally as teenagers on a local radio station in Chattanooga. What provoked you guys to become singers? Well, of course, we'd, uh, my daddy was, <clears throat> I guess you'd call him a horse trader, but we raised a lot of cane. We had a sorghum mill. We made our own sorghum out of our fields, and then we did the same for other people. Every time you make three gallons of syrup, one gallon is for the toll, and the man that owns the cane gets the two gallons. So Lordy mercy, at the end of the, the of the cane season, we might have as many as 5,000 half-gallon buckets of syrup. And so my daddy would go to Knoxville, Atlanta, Birmingham, Nashville, Rome, Georgia, all these places with a load of syrup trying to sell it. And in those days, the syrup would bring you 25 cents a bucket. Wow. Today, if you can find somebody that's still growing cane and making sorghum, it's nine dollars a bucket. So it's actually it's gone up 36 times higher than it was when I was a kid. It's getting to where you can't afford it. <laughs> Unless you go to the smokehouse, they got they got it affordable. <laughs> yeah, well, but they I don't know if they've got pure Sand Mountain sorghum. That's really uh, interesting. Uh, but that's the way it was labeled. And there was a man in uh, Rainsville, Alabama, that started mixing Cairo and called it pure. And they prosecuted him and went to jail. That's what. That's how much the people believed in their pure Sand Mountain Sargon. They just didn't want nobody uh, selling something that wasn't pure. And how did you transition from that to singing was that was music just always a part of your lives or? it was it was it was my daddy played the five claw hammer style uh, don't don't worry about the dog we've got him tied in there he's a killer he weighs two pounds <laughs> and uh, but uh, at, at seven years old my brother would have been ten we started singing together and we were very bashful we didn't want to sing in front of people, and that's what you have to do. But when uh, friends or foe came to our house, Papa would insist that my brother and I would sing them a song. Because he, he heard something there that we hadn't heard yet. And so we, uh, in every, every room in the house there was a bed, because there were seven kids and, and Mom and Papa. So the bed in the living room where the fireplace was, was Mom and Papa's bed. And it was at least 20 inches off of the floor, one of those steel beds. So we would crawl under this bed, put our hind ends together, and sing a song for these people. And then we'd crawl out the back side and get out of the house. Just one song's all they get. We did that for several years and then Roy Acuff came. At the time he came, I was 13 years old. He came to the opera, 12 years old. And we heard him, and he was coming to our neck of the woods to do a show date, a program. Well, we didn't have the 50, I think it's 15 cents for kids, but we didn't have it, so 
but we went anyway. <coughs> we got there, the yard was full of people, and so was the house. So it was warm weather, they had to open the windows because it wasn't air conditioned, so we heard as good as anybody in the house did. And uh, we looked at them, the way they dressed, what they drove to the, uh, to the show. It had four doors on each side of it and a hood that you couldn't even reach the top of it. And it was a Franklin air-cooled automobile. And we thought that was as good as on in a freight train, you know. As some of the corners down there, they had to back up because they couldn't make the turn. But we seen that and, uh, and, and set our dream on where Mr. Acuff was. That was at the Opera. And then in 1941, uh, we entered a contest in, in uh, Chattanooga. By that time, I was already married because that would have made me 14 years old and he would have been 17. He had a child, they had a child before he became 18 years old. And then he talked my dad into allowing me to go to Chattanooga so that we could compete. And uh, if you won three Saturday nights in a row, you would have a 15-minute program on WDEF, which at that time was a 250-watt radio station. But it, being so few radio stations, our dad and mom could hear us when we went on in the mornings. And the first show date that we ever played, both of us was working at the Peerless Willard Mill. And the first show date we did, somebody wrote in and wanted us to come to Jasper, Tennessee. So we played in the courthouse, uh, upstairs in the courtroom, and uh, we made $75 a piece, just the two of us. That was big money, wasn't it? Doggone right, it was twice. We made as much that night as we made in two weeks, working 40 hours a week at the Pyramus. So that in, uh, concreted our love for the music, and uh, we started dreaming of being on the Grand Ole Opry at that time. We really took the long way around, you know. We won that in Chattanooga. We worked the 4th of July celebration in Flat Rock, Alabama in 1941. Made close to $100 a piece. At, at, and in that, at that time, my daddy was working for the WPA. He, he uh, you didn't work uh, eight hours in those days. You worked from daylight to dark. In the summertime, that's better than 14 hours a day. He did this for 50 cents a day. So six days work, he made $3. And here we made 75 or $80 a piece for one day. And we promised at that time we'd stick to it through thick or thin. And friend, it got thin at times. But we stuck with it. And after working in uh, Knoxville, Greensboro, South, uh, Greensboro, North Carolina, Danville, Virginia, and Memphis, Tennessee, and Birmingham. Then we finally got on the opera in 1955. So it took us 14 years of dreaming and hard work, but, but we, we made it. Ladies and gentlemen, are you ready for a show tonight? Let me hear you say yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, straight from the Hall of Fame, from the Country Music's Hall of Fame, the man who helped change lives and change music throughout history, gave Elvis Presley his phrasing, George Jones his voice, and on and on. The one and only and the great, Charlie Luther. That's it. Somebody kick it and we'll try to say it. <laughs> 